Hey everyone, Rat Benatar here from the All Rats team, part of the Third Web community. And today, we have a very special video because we're talking about signature-based minting. It's a fairly extensive topic in itself, so we can't possibly cover 100% of all use cases in just this video alone. But I will be showing you how to build a few really cool new web apps today and explaining more about the concept in general. I think that once you see what we're talking about, it's going to make you completely rethink what's possible when it comes to minting NFTs. So if you're interested at all in learning things like how to allow your community to mint their own NFTs onto a shared contract, how to restrict minting to only VIP members with specific passcodes that you've given them, or even how to allow users to mint a specific one of one piece out of your brand new collection, then you need to watch this video to the end. As always, if you enjoy this content, please be sure to give the video a like, subscribe to our channel, and share it with a friend who may enjoy it. Now, the signature minting mechanism used in our token smart contracts is a way for a contract admin to authorize an external party's request to mint tokens on the admin's contract. At a high level, this means that you can authorize some external party to mint tokens on your contract and specify what exactly will be minted by that party. So what does this look like in practice? Well, I'm going to show you two different methods of using signature-based minting for your next project. All the links that you need are in the description, so feel free to follow along as we go. First up, let's take a look at this page that we have set up as a live tutorial. This handy web app can be used to do all sorts of cool things, depending on how comfortable you are at messing with some of the code and how creative you can be. What you're looking at is a shared NFT collection, ultimately owned by Third Web, that allows people to mint their own tokens onto it, so long as they meet the specific criteria that is. In this specific case, we allow you to mint your own NFT so long as it has the name of an animal. We also restrict you to only owning one NFT on this contract. So let's now take a look at how you can build this on your own. First up, you're going to want to go to Third Web and create an ERC721 collection on Mumbai. It's a test network for Polygon. I'm next going to visit Vercel and get set up there so that I'm not limited to local development only. I'm going to open up the signature-based minting GitHub repo from Third Web. And I'm going to use Vercel to do new project, import third party. Once I've done that, I'm going to clone that repo for myself locally and open up my text editor. I'm then going to create my local environment variable file and add my wallet private key and contract address. It is extremely important that your private key stays private. So please double check that your git ignore file is set to ignore the local environment files. That way it never gets published or seen by any third party. Also, if you're only keeping this locally, you can keep those environment variables in that local file no problem. But if you're like me and you're deploying on Vercel, you'll want to use their environment variable setup when it comes to production. Now, because we're going straight from the third web GitHub repo, a lot of this is pretty much already done for us. So we're just going to go through a couple of the different steps that we have listed in our directions. First up, that includes the prompt at loading and displaying NFTs, where we're going to take our own contract address and put it into place. You can find your collection address from within the third web dashboard. Now that we've got the NFTs loaded, we can display them to the user. We'll let you decide how best to display your NFTs, but if you're looking for an example, you can check out the index file that we already have pre-made for you. Next, you wanna take note of the API directory of your project. This is where we actually initialize the third web SDK, load the contents of the collection onto the index page, and run our checks to make sure that the user interacting with the contract is qualified to be able to mint. You'll see that this repo comes with the file called animals, which is the list that we're checking against when users go to mint. 
We're also checking to make sure that the user doesn't already own an NFT in the connected wallet from this contract already. If the user fails to meet either of these checks, they will be denied the ability to mint. But as long as they do meet both conditions, the mint will go through successfully. I'm going to now just deploy this to its own web page using Vercel. And there you go. You can see how you can get more creative with this real easily. And with just a few modifications, you can really make this your own. Because you can do things like modify the index page so that it includes a section for NFT description, or even some default attributes that you want each piece to have. Change the animals file so that it's just a list of unique coupon codes that you've given out to VIP members of your community, and so much more. Again, all of the starting resources you just saw can be found in the links of the description of this video, so I really encourage you to take a look. Okay, shifting gears a bit, let's take a look at another really cool use case for signature-based minting with this example page. What you're looking at here is something a little different than the last example. Let's say that you have a new NFT collection coming out, and you'd like to be able to do any of the following. Set different prices for different pieces in your collection. Allow users before the public sale to pick and choose the specific one of one piece that they want. Or only allow users who hold a piece in your previous collection to be able to mint from this page. All this and more is possible, of course, so let's see how it's done. Once again, we get started at ThirdWeb, and this time I'm creating my collection on Rinkabee. We just need the contract deployed on it and nothing else. That's because what we're really doing here is setting up a page of unminted NFTs for people to buy. Once they actually purchase, that's when they become minted and a part of the collection. I'm next going to visit Vercel and get set up there so that I'm not limited to local development only. I'm going to open up ThirdWeb's next TypeScript starter, and I'm going to use Vercel to do new project, import third party. Once I've done that, I'm going to clone the repo for myself and open up my text editor. Following the directions on the page, I am going to install all of my dependencies. And once again, I'm going to create my local environment variable file and add my wallet's private key. Again, it is critically important that your git ignore file is set to ignore pushing these local environment variable files. In following the directions, I want to make sure that my app page is all set up, and I'm going to ensure that the chain is the one that I have set for my collection. Again, in this case, that is Rinkaby. I'm going to find that the index page is where I'm adding my wallet connect information. And I'm going to next create an API folder inside of the pages folder and create my get NFTs file. The first section of the get NFTs page is set up to show the contents and price of the mint. Here is actually really where I set up all of the different NFTs that I want available for people to purchase. And I can update items like the name, the token ID, the price, and of course the image URL, which will be the image that actually gets minted into the collection. Most importantly, note the attribute here that reads minted, as this is what determines whether or not the user visiting the page is able to mint this specific piece. The second part of Get NFTs is going to show how to use the Third Web API to update the data associated with these NFTs based on user behavior. You can follow along in the comments of this code snippet to find your answer to questions like, how can we keep the minted flag up to date with which NFTs have actually been minted? Once all that is settled, we can now focus on the front end. To do that, we'll create a new folder called components and inside it, a new NFTs file. We're going to be using this file to call the back end to fetch the NFTs and then display them, set up our loading and error states, and the ability to mint the NFT itself. Finally, before you deploy to Vercel or share this project, don't forget to import the NFTs component into the index file. I'm going to now just deploy this to its own web page using Vercel. And there you go. You can see how you can get more creative with this real easily. And with just a few modifications, you can really make this thing your own. You can make modifications like having a different price point for different pieces that maybe have more valuable traits associated with them. 
You can change the default metadata that gets associated with each piece. Or you can even hide each piece from the page entirely once it has been sold. So, I know that was a lot, so props to you if you're still here with me. We're just getting started with this concept, and we believe that there is an enormous amount of potential for signature-based minting. We really only scratched the surface here in today's video. Keep an eye out for future updates to come as we continue to make these features more expansive, but also more accessible and approachable. What ideas do you have in mind for your own project? And what questions do you have that we can answer for you? Please just share either way down below because we would love to hear from you on this topic. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.